Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my Game Engine series. So last time we started our 2D render, it was all very exciting. Make sure that you check out that video if you haven't already. And today, I got a haircut. Let's get that out of the way. And second of all, we've got a very simple goal in mind as to what we're doing today. We're gonna to be continuing on our 2D renderer and we're going to just make it so that we can actually set the position and size of our rectangle. Because currently we can render a rectangle in our 2D renderer, it's all very exciting. But that quad that we're rendering is in a fixed position, it's basically whatever data is inside that vertex buffer, that's where it gets rendered. But obviously in a real world scenario and judging by the parameters we've written for our draw quad function, we want to be able to set the position and size, in other words, the transform of our actual rectangle. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's super hot today. Australian summer's coming. So transforms. Transforms are a very important concept, of course, for game engines and games in general. Whenever you want to render something on the screen or just track the position of something, you'll likely be using transforms. And transforms, of course, are kind of a compound of the translation, the rotation, and the scale, usually in that order, kind of TRS, translation, rotation, scale. You hear that a lot. And the way that we're going to be achieving this with our simple 2D renderer is very well, simple. We're just going to be setting up a matrix that we send into our shader via a uniform per draw call, and that's going to determine the transform of our rectangle. However, I don't necessarily want to take in a whole matrix as a transform. Usually when you're drawing quads, just like we are here, we have a very simple API where we simply might be specifying like a a two component vector as the actual position and same for the size, right? So we have two floats to determine the size, two floats to determine the position. Rotation might be something we consider as well in the future. That's, you know, you can extend the API to do that. But for now, we're just gonna be focusing on these two. It's really not that difficult. In fact, you guys could probably do something like that for homework if you wanted to. In fact, yes, we're gonna add position and size, but you guys are gonna take a look at adding rotation. The other big problem that we have right now as I'm looking through this code is that, well, it's not really a problem, it's just more of an annoyance. And that is the fact that anytime we want to set a uniform in, in our shader at the moment, we actually have to use the OpenGL shader API specifically because the shader API doesn't actually have any functions to set uniforms. Because in the future, as I explained, it's usually gonna be handled by a material system. We'll be, send, we'll be uh, setting entire buffers instead of individual variables. But for now, I think it's reasonable for us to extend the API so that we can set individual uniforms. I think that's something that in the future will be good for debugging anyway, like if something's not working or if we wanna force something for any kind of circumstance, maybe for debug purposes, it would be nice to be able to be like, you know, materials aside, I want to forcibly set this particular uniform variable to be a certain value and that's final. So because of that, we're going to be introducing an API in this video as well um, so that we can do that and that should be relatively simple. But first I want to thank all of the patrons that made this series possible. Patreon.com forward slash the channel is the best way to help support this series and everything that I'm doing here on YouTube. As a reward for helping to support this series, you'll get access to a much more advanced code base of the Hazel engine, which has like 3D rendering, animation, that kind of stuff already implemented. So if you're interested in that, you don't want to do 2D rendering, then definitely check that out and help support this series. Okay, so step one, fix up this shader API. I want to make it so that we don't have to dynamic cast to an OpenGL shader whenever we want to set a uniform. And then we're just going to be adding basically transforms into our 2D renderer so that we can actually render our quads at different locations and sizes. Let's do it. Okay, so step one is, as I mentioned, and this is what we did last time, we added this little to-do, um, basically telling ourselves that we should add a set mat for, set float for, that kind of stuff here so that we don't actually have to do this. And if we take a look at our 2D renderer, all right, here it is, renderer2d.cpp, you can see that we're including OpenGL shader and then we're doing all of this dynamic cast stuff. Not really ideal, not something that I wanna do at all. So what I'm gonna do is just remove this. We shouldn't be including that anywhere. Um, and then we just need to make this work basically and that should not be too difficult at all So what I'm gonna do is basically change this API around a little bit I'm gonna make a function called set uniform mat for now The reason I'm calling this set and not upload because you can see it's called upload here is because I like to differentiate it like accordingly. So upload is more of like a API specific call where we're basically saying okay, you know for OpenGL that'll be like a GL set uniform mat for or whatever GL uniform mat for that's the actual OpenGL function that we use to set that particular uniform. Whereas set is a much more kind of high level concept because that might set it inside a uniform buffer, that might set it individually, 
We're not really tying this directly to an OpenGL call, whereas this kind of is. So hopefully that clears it up. Set is just a much higher level concept and what it does might depend on a number of factors, whereas upload is pretty simple. Upload just literally just uploads it to the GPU. Okay, cool. So we have set uniform mat four. This of course, we don't need this dynamic class anymore. So I'll just remove it from pretty much everywhere here. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'll get rid of these parentheses, of course. Yeah, that's exactly the API that we're kind of looking for. And this, of course, also becomes a set uniform mat four. And in fact, it's pretty clear that if we are setting stuff like that, it's gonna be a uniform. So we could probably just trim that as well. To, just to keep it really simple here. I think that's important as well because, you know, in DirectX, for example, this would be more or less like a set constant buffer type call, not necessarily a set uniform call. And so because of that, I think set map four is a little bit like less kind of specific to particular uh, uniforms. And then if I scroll down, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here. So we'll bind the shader because that needs to happen. And then we will do, uh, let's see here. Um, flat color shader set float four. Okay, cool. So we have this API here. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, it's really, really useful for us to actually be able to uh, write out what it is we want to do first without specifically um, making the API. So in other words, this is what I want the API to look like. Now that I've written it out, it's very easy for me to go ahead and make those functions. So if I pop over to shader, um, what I'm going to do is add those functions in. So we've got maybe underbind and unbind. So I'll have a set mat4, for example, const uh, glm mat4 value equals zero. And then I'll do the same for, I might have float4. And I wanted to add float3 as well, just because that's commonly used. And this will be a vec3, of course. This will be a vec4. All right, looks pretty good to me. What I'll do is copy all of these declarations, of course, and then take them into the OpenGL shader class. All right, so here we are in OpenGL shader. Um, I'll add these in. These will, of course, be overrides instead of this equals zero stuff. Um, okay, cool, looks pretty good to me. So now we'll implement these. So popping over to the CPP file, I'll just grab these really quickly. Um, let's see, where are we gonna add these? So I'll add them probably, well, just under bind and unbind because that seems like the logical uh, place to actually add them in. All right, open jail shader, override, blah, blah, blah. Get rid of that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And of course, in this case, all this is gonna do is basically upload um, our uniform, you know, float three. So this is super simple. Um, of course, what I did was completely forget about the fact that we need to have a name. Um, so const std string name, just like that. Um, because we don't obviously need, well, we need to know what, what uniform we're actually setting. So I just completely overlooked that. Uh, let's see. Um, just like that. And then in the header file as well pasting these in. Okay, cool. And then this is just gonna be name value. So this is super simple in this case. Um, once we do have a material system, these will do something a little bit different. Uh, they will actually have to probably um, go into the buffer and set the values accordingly. But for this case, it's just a simple upload, which is nice and easy. Okay, that's it. That's all we had to do to get rid of these things completely. I'll get rid of these comments. And if we go back into our renderer 2D, you should see that we now have a very simple API here that doesn't need to um, include this uh, platform OpenGL shaper include. Cool, so there we go. A little bit of maintenance there. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room, so to speak, not that it's a particularly large elephant, but we wanna be able to set position and size for our quads. If we launch this um, uh, engine, I should probably just test out that my changes didn't break anything first before we continue. So I'm just gonna compile and run Hazel here. Okay, so I did in fact get build errors. So yep, good thing that I actually uh, tested this out. Okay, it's not happy with GLM. Apparently we weren't including GLM. So if I go back to probably, well, someplace that does include GLM, such as renderer 2D maybe, or maybe it's orthographic camera. There it is. I'll just uh, copy and paste that include here into, where was this? Shader.h, um, because we need to have that now. F5. All right, and here we have our initial kind of running program. Cool, so everything works, everything's fine. From here on out, we can actually work on the transforms. So going back to renderer 2D, um, let's take a look at this. So currently we're setting the transform. The transform, of course, is the kind of uniform that we wanna set. If we take a look at the shader, 
we have our flat color shader. Um, the transformation that happens here in the vertex shader is we multiply the view projection matrix by the transform matrix and then by the vertex positions. So this transform is that missing piece. This is what we actually want to set up per kind of rectangle, I guess, per quad that we draw. Um, and then that will position it appropriately. And this transform, of course, is not just a position. It's not like a VEC3 or anything like that. It's a MAT4, which means it can be a full transform, translation, rotation, and scale. And as mentioned, we're gonna be dealing with translation and scale to set the position and the size of that quad. So going back here, what I'll do is I'll remove this transform from being set inside the begin scene function, because of course this should be something that gets set per draw. So over here in the draw quad, what we'll do is um, we'll set the mat for transform over here. Um, now we actually have to calculate the transform. So let's do that. So what this is gonna be is a mat for, I'll call it transform. And then um, basically we're gonna use GLM translate, which I think we'll probably need to include from somewhere. If I go to sandbox 2D, matrix transform is the include for that. I'm pretty sure we don't have that, but I might keep it around. Yeah, we, we don't. Um, so we'll include the matrix transform here so that we get the function. GLM map for uh, 1.0 is just the identity matrix that we're starting off with. That's what we're translating. And then we're gonna translate it to the position. And position's already in a VEC3, so that's really nice. That's all we have to do. Now, if we want to also have the size, which we do, we need to scale it. So I'll just use a GLM scale to create a scale matrix. GLM map for 1.0F is what we're starting off with. I might just drop this down here so that it's more visible for you guys. Um, and then what I'll do is, of course, convert the size into a scale, basically. So we want to scale along the X and Y axes, not the Z axis. So I'll make a, well, I can probably just do um, Kelly brackets here as an initialize list. So size.x, size.y, and then zero, oh sorry, 1.0 for the Z scale. So there we go. That is our scale matrix. And we're multiplying that with uh, our translation matrix. You always kind of want to do it, do it in that order. Translation times rotation times scale. So for those of you who want to add rotation, uh, add it here. And now that we've got that transform, of course, we'll just set it up here. I might just revert this back to being all on one line because I don't really think it has to be two lines. So that's fine. Um, and then what we'll do is set that transform accordingly. And I think that's it. That should be everything that we need. So as simple as that, we should now have transforms for all of our quads. So let's test this out by drawing two quads. Of course, this is just being drawn at zero, zero and with a size of one, so it should be absolutely no change. But what we'll do over here is try and maybe, well, let's move this back a little bit. So we'll maybe move it back uh, about one on the X axis there and I'll reduce the size a little bit. I'll make it like 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Um, and I guess we should also maybe draw something that is at maybe 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. So we're kind of going down um, and then I'll make it non-uniform. So I'll make it um, a little bit taller than it is wide. So maybe 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. And I'll also change the color to test that out. I'll make it blue. So we have a blue. Uh, so we basically have a red square that's off to the left, and then we should have a blue rectangle um, that is off to the kind of bottom right. So let's take a look at that. Okay, and there we go. We have that red square now off to the left, and we can of course move the camera around and do everything that we did before. And then we have that blue rectangle off to the bottom right. And that's all there is to it. As you can see, it's very, very simple to get transforms working in this 2D renderer. Now you can position these any way you like. You can set the size to whatever you like. You can expand this to also include rotation pretty much you could make some kind of game with this for sure. We have an event system with like arrow keys, for example, that we can use to move all of these things around. Um, you could write some kind of behaviors uh, as well to kind of um, have like these move by themselves, essentially. You could create a little world if you wanted to. Um, you know, you could add some collision detection just in the kind of, in the game layer or whatever. There's a lot you can actually do with this. Um, so go ahead and try it out if you want to do that um, and then play around with it. See if you can make a little game with it because we are at the stage where we could actually do that. Now, next time um, I wanna talk about textures because uh, of course, these are not textured yet. Once we add textures, it will make this a lot more powerful. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're moving into the space where we can actually start making games with this if that is the direction we want to go in. So I want to also mention that, of course, uh, this is the very simple 2D renderer. For those of you watching being like, this is, you know, this is 
simple stuff. Yeah, we are gonna get into, um, you know, making this a lot better in the future. The main problem with this right now is that we're kind of drawing each of these quads like as an individual draw call, which isn't particularly efficient, especially because if we want to render like a tile map or something like this, which is common to do um, in 2D or just a bunch of text even, um, with text rendering is something we have to get to as well, that'll be exciting. Um, you know, it's it's not particularly efficient to dispatch them all as a, as a, as a separate draw call, set the transforms for each draw call, stuff like that. That's, that's more of like a 3D way of rendering things. Um, so we will kind of be talking about bashing these together, making it lightning fast. All that stuff will come in the future. This is kind of just the beginning of the simple renderer um, that we need to make first so that um, we can then progress onto the more kind of advanced 2D renderer. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Don't forget to help support the series on Patreon and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Phew. <laughs>